This must be the place. Professor Oubier's house. It looks pretty creepy. I'd been away from Paris and hadn't seen Nico for nearly six months. I wanted to celebrate our reunion, but she had other plans. An appointment with an archaeologist. Something to do with a Mayan stone she came across while researching a story. The guy who answered the door didn't look much like an archaeologist to me. I had a bad feeling about this. only three things I didn't like about spiders. The way they looked, the way they moved, and the fact that they lived on the same planet as me. This spider was big, mean, and hairy, and definitely not a native of Europe. The more I looked at that spider, the less I liked it.
Professor Ubier's house. Looks pretty creepy. I'd been away from Paris and hadn't seen Nico for nearly six months. I wanted to celebrate our reunion, but she had other plans, an appointment with an archaeologist. Something to do with a Mayan stone she came across while researching a story. The guy who answered the door didn't look much like an archaeologist to me. I had a bad feeling about this. I glanced over the books, vaguely hoping to find a copy of How to Deal with Poisonous Spiders While Tied to a Chair. No such luck. But I noticed one corner of the bookcase was supported by a loose block of wood. The block of wood had been used to replace the original foot of the bookcase. Ubier's book collection was exclusively devoted to South and Central American studies. If I didn't do something soon, Ubier's library would be reduced to ashes. The more I looked at that spider, the less I liked it. Maybe I'd been a little heavy-handed, but it was a question of survival. Of course, I was still tied to a chair in a burning house with no means of escape. Yellow pus was seeping from below the bookcase. That spider was very squashed. I wasn't touching that spider goo. 
It looked like Nico's handbag, but I couldn't reach it from here. I couldn't reach while tied to the chair. I thought that I ought to free myself before examining the furniture. I decided to work out how to untie myself before exploring further. The bookcase had been anchored to the wall by a protruding metal bracket. It had sheared off as the bookcase had fallen, leaving a jagged edge. The metal bracket had a sharp and jagged edge. With one mighty bound, our hero was free. Now, I had to deal with that fire. The fire had taken hold and ignited part of the polished wooden floorboards. I racked my brains to think of a way to improvise a fire extinguisher. If only I'd stopped for a coffee at the airport. I couldn't put out the flames with my bare hands. It was a soda fountain, perfect for mixing with drinks or squirting at clowns. There was no pressure in the siphon. I guess it was out of gas. The cabinet was locked. In the cabinet's wooden door was a very small keyhole. The bars attached to the window would prevent anyone getting in. They also stopped me from getting out. I wasn't going anywhere through that window. This window had bars, too. The room was a prison. I wasn't going to get through those sturdy bars. I looked up and down the street, hoping to attract the attention of a passerby. There was no one in sight. The quiet street was empty. It was a closed drawer. In the drawer was a small decorated pot. There was nothing else in the drawer. The pot contained a key. The red and yellow pot had black decorative markings shaped like hands. Weird mutant hands, that is. It looked like a house key. The key was way too large to fit into that tiny keyhole. It was a needle-sharp dart with a flight of green and yellow feathers. That dart was sharper than a mosquito's business end, but this didn't deter me from getting it anyway. It was the poison dart which had stunned Nico. I'd never known anything keep her quiet so effectively. As I released the lock, something blew the doors open. The cabinet was already open. Inside the cabinet was a small metal object round at one end with a valve at the other. It was a small cylinder which seemed to have exploded. I couldn't think of a use for a burst cylinder. It was a small metal cylinder. That cylinder was hot. I couldn't pick it up with my bare hands. It was Nico's bag. Stylus little canvas number containing a lipstick, a handwritten note, and a pair of nylon panties with a large love heart emblazoned across the front. It occurred to me that Nico's tastes must have really changed while I was away. Well, they could be useful. I'd already ransacked Nico's handbag. 
And besides which, the color didn't suit me. It was a pair of red, lace-trimmed panties decorated with a large black satin heart. The panties I'd found in Nico's bag were just what I needed to wrap around the hot cylinder. It was a small metal cylinder with a valve at one end. The cylinder gave out a faint hiss as the valve opened. Huh? Now I had one primed up and ready to use extinguisher. Our unshakable hero saved the day. Now it was time to start looking for Nico. I guess I had no business reading the note, but I figured it might give me a clue to what Nico was involved in. It was from Andre Labano, the history student Nico had known at college. The letter was sentimental mush, and revealed that the exotic lingerie, as he called it, was a gift from him. It gave his telephone number. Labano figured himself as a rival for Nico's affections, but I couldn't believe that that creep was in the running. It was the letter to Nico from that creep Labano, sickening. It was Nico's lipstick. It wasn't my color, and it reminded me of clowns. It was the box that spider had crawled from. I wasn't going to touch the box after that spider had been inside it. The bookcase had fallen on its front, making it impossible to reach the books inside. The bookcase was too heavy to lift. Besides, I had more important things to do than shift furniture, saving my neck for one. Even if I had the time, I wouldn't be able to get to the books beneath the heavy case. The projecting bracket had served its purpose. There was nothing else I could do with it. I had no further use for the bracket. The rope was shredded and no possible use to me. It was the chair I'd been tied to. I had no time to sit around. Ubier and his wife, I guess. Nice couple. The photograph wasn't any use to me. It was an oddly designed candle holder with a coil of metal shaped like a snake. Highly artistic, but of very little practical use. The bureau had a sliding lid. Inside, I found a bottle of tequila. The bureau contained Professor Ubier's tequila. It was a half bottle of extra strong Mexican tequila. Just what I needed under the circumstances. It was a half bottle of tequila. Normally, I didn't drink strong spirits, but today was far from normal. Ew. Disgusting. Not only did the tequila burn like hell, I just managed to stop myself from swallowing the worm. What looked like a little shriveled wiener lay on the carpet. Thankfully, it was only the worm from the tequila bottle. Well, I wasn't going to eat it, but life had taught me one thing. No matter how unlikely it seems, the strangest objects have their uses. Even tequila worms. It was that itsy bitsy tequila worm. I really must remember to take it out of my pants before I send them to the laundry. I'd drunk enough of that. The door blocked my only means of escape. I wasn't going to burn myself on that red-hot doorknob, and it wasn't the time for subtlety. The doorway led to the 
the stairs in the entrance hall. The stairs led to the first floor room. The door led to some other part of Ubier's mansion. It was locked. The house key didn't fit this lock. Whatever lay beyond the door was going to remain a mystery. The front door was made of hard wood, supported by a sturdy frame. The door was locked. I didn't fancy my chances of kicking this door down. I unlocked the door. Without a plan, I had nowhere to go. Maybe there was something in the house which would give me a clue where Nico had been taken. I wasn't going anywhere until I had a plan of action. It was a folded clipping taken from a newspaper. I'd found a piece of newspaper folded in two. It referred to a forthcoming eclipse of the sun. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be visible from Europe. The best place to view the eclipse would be Mexico. It was the newspaper clipping referring to the imminent eclipse. Wrapped inside it was another small piece of paper. It was a bank statement for UBA's account from an automatic telling machine. The last five withdrawals were for large amounts and all made in Marseille. It was UBA's bank statement. It was Ubier's telephone. Much as I disliked him, Labano might be my only hope of finding Nico. Hi, Andre. Who is this? It's George Stobart, Nico's boyfriend. Don't you mean ex-boyfriend? Look, I didn't call you just to pick a fight. I need to talk to you about Nico. Can't you accept she's just not interested in you? Listen, Andre, we need to talk. Nico's life depends on it. Okay. You remember the cafe at Montfaucon? Sure. Andre? You'd better show, you creep. I felt an irrational urge to wipe my ear. There was no one else I wanted to call. I wasn't looking forward to meeting Labano again, but he was my only link with Nico. There was no sign of Labano when I got to the cafe. I decided to order a coffee and wait for him. The man at the next table looked somehow familiar. It was a small silver flask from which the man was topping up his glass. I snuck another look at the guy at the other table, but I still couldn't place his face. The waiter's stained and crumpled clothes looked as if they'd been slept in. I decided not to bother with a meal. Oh, garçon? He ignored me. I'm sure it was deliberate. He was too hot to sit inside the cafe. Besides, I might miss Labano. I couldn't snatch the man's flask while he was looking.
Hey, you. Qua, I'd like a cup of coffee if you don't mind. When I finish serving this gentleman. That waiter didn't seem to care much about his appearance. Or his customers. The street led back to the center of Paris. I had no place to go except back to Ubier's house. Besides, I didn't want to miss Lobino. So I decided to sit tight and wait. Un café. Thanks. Do you know a guy called André Lobino? Oui. I know him. What of it? Well, I'm supposed to meet him here. Did I miss him? No. I have not seen him today. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Oui. He married that actress, the little Dachshund. They used to come here. The nutty professor and the movie star. If Oubier's wife was a movie star, how come I never heard of her? She was big in France. The world doesn't stop at Hollywood. Her stage name was Carol Climax. She died in suspicious circumstances. How did Oubier's wife die? I heard he shot her. And got away with it? He had a good lawyer and they wrote a tight alibi. Why would an eminent public figure like Oubier risk everything for murder? He wouldn't be the first, would he? Besides, people like him always get off. Do you know that man over there? I should think so. He's a regular customer. Who is he? A man with a secret. He used to be a cop. Of course. I'd met the gendarme in this very cafe. He was kicked out of the force a few months ago. Since then, he's been drinking himself stupid. His liver must look like the last pickle in the jar. What does that guy keep pouring out of his flask? Absinthe. Absinthe? I thought that was highly dangerous and outlawed in France. It is. Don't look at me. I didn't sell it to him. Look at this. A poison dart. Now we. Oui. Sure. It's the real thing. Knocked my girlfriend out cold in a matter of seconds. Romantic. Sounds like a real close relationship you have going. That's all. Thank you. Well, well, this is a surprise, Georgie. I wouldn't normally call you. But Nico's in trouble, Andre. Deep trouble. You have to help me find her. What? What have you dragged her into this time? It was you that recommended Professor Oubier as an expert on Mayan art. Now his butler has kidnapped her. And he tried to kill me. Every time she gets involved with you, there is trouble. Walking out on her was the best thing you could do. My father was dying, damn it. I had no choice. Well, she soon recovered once she went back to her old friends. Drop it, Andre. Right now, Nico's in danger, and we have to work together. So, how can I help? Nico needed to speak to Oubier about a stone. Oh, you mean this stone? So that's what all the trouble's about. Precisely. Nicole told me to guard it with my life. Well, it's worth more than that, surely. Oh, very funny. What's funny is that your life really is on the line. What are you talking about? The stone is a Mayan artifact, dummy. And the guy who kidnapped Nico was from Central America. It was the stone they were after. Oh my god, you mean I could be in danger too? What do you suppose the carving on the stone means? I don't know. I haven't shown it to anyone. Why don't you just give it to me? I don't want your death on my conscience, Georges. Much as I hated to admit it, Labano was the only lead I had left. In that dusty archive he called a mind, he had to know something to help find Nico. It was just a question of pumping it out of him. Where did Nico get the stone? I'm not sure I should tell you. Oh, you should. It was something to do with smuggling. Take a look at this, Andre. It's a bank statement? Yeah. Professor Oubier's account. Five large cash withdrawals in the space of three days. All from an automatic teller in Marseille. Suspicious, isn't it? You're even more crazy than you were before. 
I really needed to know more from Labano before I let him go. What can you tell me about this pot? South or Central American, I'd say. I have a friend who'd be able to tell you more. Where can I find this guy? He owns a gallery on the left bank, the Glees Gallery. Does Ubia employ a guy from Central America? Maybe. I don't know. You've never been to his house? I thought you guys were pals. Fellow academics, Georgie. It's not quite the same thing. Why didn't Nico take the stone to Ubia? I don't know. Perhaps she suspected something like this would happen. If she's been hurt, Andre, I'll break every bone in your body. No, that's typical of you. Do you think I don't care what happens to Nicole? It occurred to me that slugs don't have bones to break, but I kept that thought to myself. What do you think this is, Andre? I don't know. I'll give you a clue. It's got more backbone than you. You think you're amusing, don't you? Tell me about your friend Ubie. He's more of a professional acquaintance than a friend. I see. So you don't really know him at all? No, I don't. See you later. Goodbye, Georgie. I've had enough of your games, Kala. Tell me what you've done with my stone. I thought your business was simply smuggling cocaine, Karzak. Why are you so interested in that stone? Either you tell me what I want to know, or Pablo here will make you talk. Okay. Well, I figured someone at the university would be able to help. So I had a word with one of my girlfriends, and she told me her boyfriend was a lecturer. I... I sent the stone to the Department of Ethnology. You know, I figured it was South American, so... You're not buying this, are you? That's enough! I don't have time to listen to your mindless prattle. We'll leave you to think it over. Come the morning, you'll be ready to talk. Pardon me, but don't I know you? Huh? You were here, the, the day I found the catacombs. I was? Ah, yes. I remember you. Yeah. Are you still in the police force? No, not anymore. I'm a man of leisure. What brings you back to Paris? My girlfriend. What it is to be young and in love. Will you share a bottle of wine with me? Hey, listen. I'd love to, but I need to keep a clear head. So my company isn't good enough for you. What's that you're drinking? It's wine. The waiter said it's absinthe. That fool wouldn't know Perno from Catspiece. Ever heard of Carol Climax, the movie star? Yes, but I don't care for the kind of movie she's made. It's smut like that which has caused the moral decline of the Western world. Is it true that Carol Climax was murdered by her husband? First I heard of it. I thought she just retired. Have you ever heard of a Professor Ubie? No, Monsieur. I don't recall the name. Well, apparently he's an expert on Mayan art and history. A little out of my field of experience, Monsieur. If he'd been a serial killer or a sodomite, I might have been able to help. The ex-gendarme showed no effects from the wine he was pouring down his throat. The man was still looking. What do you make of this dart? Ah, I remember a case where the victim was killed with just such a device. The poison acted in seconds, causing his body to swell up like an inflatable life raft. What do you make of this news cutting? Orphanage supplied fast food chain? No, it's the article above that. Oh! Total eclipse of the sun. Well, that's very dull in comparison. I don't know anything about eclipses. Tell me what you make of this note. From my years of experience, I gained a pretty good insight into handwriting. I'd say that note was written by a compulsive, obsessive type. 
with an Oedipus complex. Hey, you got just about everything apart from the ponytail. I'm trying to find my girlfriend. She's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? Yeah, it was our first day back together after many months. That's too bad. My God, that's depressing. I grabbed the flask and was struck by a powerful smell of absinthe, a highly potent and illegal alcoholic drink. It was the flask of absinthe I'd borrowed from the gendarme. Excuse me. What? I'd been looking forward to seeing my girl, but she wanted to rush off to see some professor. I see. And you think she's having an affair with this professor? Look, uh, forget it. It doesn't matter. Why did you leave the police? I was forced to retire. The golden handshake. Only in my case, it was more copper than gold. How come? I was made a scapegoat to cover up the department's inefficiencies. Do you miss being a gendarme? <sighs> yes, of course I do. When I wore that uniform, I commanded the respect. Not anymore. I was sure I'd asked for cream in my coffee, but he brought me black. The coffee had developed an oily film on the surface. The coffee was very bitter and only lukewarm. There was also an unpleasant coagulated lump at the bottom of the cup. I had no desire to go down into the sewers. Excuse me. What? Didn't you try to appeal against your dismissal? There was no point. It was my word against that of the chief inspector. And he was a close friend of the director of the museum I was supposed to be patrolling. <sighs> the cup was empty apart from an unpleasant brown stain and a thick lump. That was undoubtedly the most disgusting cup of coffee I'd ever tasted in my life. You need anything else? There's something incubating in the bottom of my cup, garçon. You asked for it. That's the cream. But it's all in one lump. No problem. I'll bring you a fork. Uh, forget it. That's all. Thank you. Excuse me. What? Which museum was it you were supposed to be patrolling? It wasn't as if anything important was stolen. <laughs> Just a rusty old tripod. The tripod had returned a few weeks later. Excuse me. Leave me alone. Now I had another lead. I could either go back to Ubier's house or visit the Glees Gallery. The Glees Gallery had style and class, but very few customers. The door led out to the street. The Wasteland. Too minimalistic for too much money. Hi, girls.
What's the joke? Anata wa kirete desu ne. Okay, fine. If I wanted to be laughed at, there was always Nico. Rectangles in a desolate landscape. Highly cubist. Spheres in a barren waste. Oh, very profound. I could see a pattern emerging in this artist's work. The cabinet contained a fine array of pots, all marked at 5,000 francs. So the pot from Ubier's house must be worth a fortune. Pots, pots and more pots, all hugely expensive. The pots were protected by a glass case. The glass stopped me from picking up the exhibits. He was a pear-shaped guy with a fine display of multiple chins. The glass was half full of wine. Are you Mr. Glees, the owner? Good God, no. Uh, then I guess that must be him over there, right? Your powers of deductive reasoning astound me. What's that you're drinking? I'm not sure, but I have a suspicion it might be urine. Glees can't expect a favorable criticism of his gallery when he serves this muck. Have you heard of Professor Ubier? Yes, of course. I was at his house earlier. If you're going to drop names, you could at least name one worth dropping. I thought Ubier was a well-respected man. Why, his last book was nothing but pseudo-intellectual claptrap. The demented ramblings of a drug-dependent has-been. I didn't think much of any of these artifacts. It looked like a witch and a headless bust. I had seen better. Lots of hugely expensive pots. At that price, I wasn't going anywhere near those pots. The girls were in a world of their own. He looked like an older version of Labano. The same supercilious expression, the same disdain in his eyes, and the same damned ponytail. Excuse me, sir. Uh-huh. That area is private. Oh, uh, so I'm not allowed back here? No, sir. Excuse me, there really is nothing to see back there. Okay, I get the message. It's rather a mess, sir. It was a machine for reading credit cards. I had no possible use for a credit card reader. Oh, no, you don't. The guy was watching me like a hawk. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Certainly, sir. I'd be most happy to oblige. You're English? These days, one prefers to think of oneself as European. Uh, sure. Whatever you say. And how precisely may one assist you, sir? I found this news story referring to a total eclipse of the sun. Really, sir? Well, well, fascinating. Do you get many Central American Indians in here? Uh, no, sir. Uh, this is Paris. Central America is several thousand kilometers southwest of here, straight across the Atlantic Ocean and turn left. You can't miss it. Well, as it happens, I saw some Central American Indians this very morning. Tourists, sir. Paris is full of them at this time of year. 
I have some questions I'd like to ask about those pots. The Mexican collection? Certainly, sir. Where did you get them from? Mexico, of course. I think, sir, we'll find the price extremely reasonable. Hey, I'm not interested in buying them. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, you'll excuse me. Who's that guy over there? That's Mr. Lane, sir, the critic. I'm hoping he'll give the gallery a favorable write-up. One has to be so patient with these critics. Lure them in with the correct bait, watch for a bite, then play them like a fish. Well, he's certainly drinking like one. Lane doesn't think much of your choice of wine. Blasted nerve. The priest who sold it to me said it was a good year. What I really wanted to ask you about was a black stone. A black stone? Yeah, it's a Mayan artifact, about as big as my hand. No, sir, one doesn't get much call for black stones. If it's Mayan artifacts you're interested in, I have some rather exquisite pots. Yeah, I noticed. I've already got one of those. Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Of course. His name is synonymous with Mayan art. A number of these artifacts were supplied by Oubier himself. I suppose you have an import license for these relics? Of course. But that's not my problem, sir. The professor arranges all the shipping. We simply collect the items from the docks. Could you tell me which docks Professor Oubier uses to import the artifacts? Good God, no. I can't possibly reveal my commercial secrets. Do you believe the story that Oubier murdered his wife? If it was true, who can blame him? She was an opportunist tramp. Well, that's what I heard. Have you seen any of Oubier's wife's films? Only one. Believe me, I was appalled, shocked, disgusted, and repulsed. Well, you sure got your money's worth. Last time I went to the movies, I wasn't even titillated. I'd like your opinion on this pot. Interesting. Would Sir be interested in selling the article? That depends. How much would you give me for it? Three hundred? Possible three twenty-five. What? Those other pots are priced at 5,000 francs each. Yes, but this is clearly the work of an inferior, degenerated culture. You mean it's English? Look, why don't you get a second opinion? From who? Mr. Lane, the world-renowned art critic and collector. He's an art critic? I thought there was a carnival in town. How come that Lane guy is so rude? It seems to be a standard requirement for critics. Well, he doesn't want to talk to me. If I was you, I'd give him a wide berth, sir. That suits me. I wouldn't want to get too close to him anyhow. It was Glees, the owner of the gallery. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the man. It was Lane, the art critic. Would you give me your opinion on this pot, sir? Very rapouche. Rapouche? Hideous. What the hell do you think you're doing? You smashed my pot. Certainly, it was not only worthless, it was ugly and offensive. To you, maybe. Believe me, I was doing you a favor. What's the difference between my pot and all those other pots? Yours is broken. Why, you smug, pompous sloth. Sticks and stones, dear boy, sticks and stones. I wasn't going to waste any more breath talking to that pompous blimp. Maybe I could turn the situation to my advantage, and at the same time, get my revenge. A valuable relic of an ancient civilization lay smashed on the floor. The pot had smashed into too many pieces to retrieve. I'd had enough of talking to that slob. The way that guy was gripping the glass, I'd need a wrench to get away from him. I splashed a little absinthe into the glass and hoped he wouldn't notice the change of color. Did you put something in my drink? Uh, yeah I did. Well, what do you think? Well, it's certainly an improvement over Gleese's wine. In fact, I could grow to like it. The glass now held a potent mixture of wine and absinthe. 
Allow me. Fragments of priceless pots lay shattered on the floor. He was out for the count. I wasn't going to waste my breath on that drunkard. Were those pots very valuable? The pots are insured, but not the shelving. You've no idea how much that cost me. Go away. Glees wasn't happy, I could tell. There was nothing worth retrieving from the mess. It was a sturdy packing case. There was nothing in the case but styrofoam packing, but pasted on the side was the remains of a label. The packing case contained nothing but styrofoam chips. It was a label bearing a company name and logo. Underneath the logo of a flying bird were the words Condor Transglobal Mars. The rest of the label was missing. It was beginning to make sense. Ubier had organized Nico's abduction. Ubier withdrew money from Marseille. Ubier was connected with Transglobal, who shipped their goods from a warehouse in Marseille. That's how the torn Transglobal label had once read. Marseille, not Mars. It wasn't much of a lead, but it was all I had. I set off immediately to catch the evening train.